Hello everyone, my name is Suleyman Dula and today we will be giving you a brief introduction on one of the topics that we have studied in our special topics in industrial engineering course. And that topic is the ant colony optimization algorithm. So now let's begin with giving a brief uh, introduction of what an ant colony is before going into the ant colony optimization algorithm. So an ant colony is a population of a single species of ant that are capable to maintain a life cycle. And every ant colony consists of three types of ants. We've got the ant queen, the alate, and the soldiers. The ant queen is the ant that lays the eggs, in which it is uh, the main source of reproduction. And then we've got the alates. The alates, as you can see, have wings, and they use those wings to travel to other colonies, in which the female alate is a future queen, and the male alate dies shortly after mating with the queen. And then lastly, we've got the soldiers. And the soldiers are mostly female, in which there are the types of ants who maintain the uh, life cycle of the colony. And they do that through various operations, uh, either taking care of the ant eggs or the main influence behind the ant colony optimization algorithm, which is uh, the search for food. Uh, so they are the ones who look for food and bring it back to the colony. So now let's go. Uh, to the ant colony optimization algorithm. So the ant colony optimization algorithm was found by an Itali uh, Italian scientist called uh, Marco Dorigo uh, in the 1990s. Uh, so all algorithms can be improved in which the ACO, ACO algorithm uh, well, has improved multiple times over the past few decades uh, since it was first called the ant systems. And it is one of the non-traditional optimization uh, methods used uh, to solve problems such as the particle swarm, the genetic algorithms, or the bee colony uh, algorithm. So the main inspiration behind the ACO algorithm is uh, stigmergy. And stigmergy is basically the behavior of the ants when searching for food. And it is derived by a special component or a special component called uh, pheromones. And basically pheromones, uh, ants use pheromones to communicate with each other or uh, to, uh, to identify a path to the, uh, to identify the shortest path to the food source. So uh, to help understand what, uh, how the pheromones work, here's a brief example. So as you can see, uh, figure A, uh, tells us that uh, there's two ants and the two ants took different paths. We've got the straight line here and we've got this uh, path here, in which it is a 50-50 uh, chance that one of these paths is the shortest path. Going to figure B, uh, figure B tells us a significant amount of uh, distance separates the these two routes. Therefore, the ant who takes the shortest route has arrived to the uh, food source first. Figure C tells us that uh, as the ant returns to the colony after locating food, uh, after locating the food source and taking some food with it, uh, uh, it leaves pheromones on the ground and uh, it will reach the ant colony first, and which is this path over here and this ant over here. Figure, figure D tells us that uh, as soon as the third ant decides to go uh, out in the search for food, it will choose the path that will take it the shortest distance, which is determined by the level of pheromones on the ground. A shorter road contains more pheromones than a longer path. So this indicates that the third ant will choose the shorter path because, because it is more convenient. Going to figure E, figure E tells us that upon returning uh, to the uh, colony, it was discovered that more ants had already traveled to the path with the higher pheromone level. Then the ant who had taken the longer route, therefore, when, an, when another ant tries to reach the colony's uh, goal, which is the food source, it will discover that each trail has the same level of pheromones as the previous one. As a result, it selects one at a random from the list of routes. Lastly, figure F tells us uh, that several uh, after several repetitions of this process, the shorter path has a higher pheromone level than the others and is more likely to be followed by the ants. As a result, all the ants will take the shorter path next time. 
So to explain the idea of pheromones in a numerical way, uh, here is a brief example. As you can see, we've got two matrices or two uh, uh, graphs in which the first uh, graph uh, is uh, the cost matrix, which defines the distance of each path. And the one that we want to obtain is the Fermion path, is the Fermion graph in which uh, it re represents the amount of Fermion on each edge. So let's go to the equations first. We've got two equations here. We've got delta tau and tau. So delta tau represents the amount of Fermion deposited by and k on the edge between R, node i and node, G, uh, node j. Uh, if tau equals zero, uh, that means that the the kth and didn't take the path between i and j. And uh, if uh, it equals, otherwise it equals one over lk if the and took uh, the path between i and j. And lk is the length uh, of uh, the edge found by the kth and so why is it over one over so why is it one over lk and that's because we're trying to identify the shortest path which means the shortest path which means that the shorter the path the higher the fermion level which also indicates that it is the probability of the ant taking the shortest path so so how do we calculate the amount of fermion on each edge we do it by summing the uh, delta tau on each path, and that's it. So now let's have a let's uh, look into the example uh, to understand the idea of the fermions. So as you can see, we have uh, two ants uh, at the bottom. We've got the purple ant and the uh, green ants, and each color represents the path that that specific ant has uh, taken. Uh, first, we calculate uh, the uh, we calculate the length of each path, which is LK. As you can see, L1 equals 14, which means it's 5 plus 4 plus 1 plus 4, which equals to 14. Going to the green ants, as you can see, it equals 31. So it's 8 plus 15 plus 4 plus 4, which equals to 31. So how do we add that? to the Fermion graph. So what we basically do, we uh, after calculating the LK for both, we have to calculate the tau, delta tau first. As we said that delta tau equals one over LK, which is one over 14, and uh, the second one is one over 31. And what we do is we look at the cost graph and see which lines are covered by one of these colors. So let's start off with the uh, purple ones. We just add the uh, delta tau to all the ones that have uh, the purple lines. So one over 14 here, one over 14 here, one over 14 here, and one over 14 here. And we do the same thing for the green ones, one over 31 here, one over 31 here. But what if uh, what if uh, the two uh, two types of ants traveled on the same uh, line? We just sum the uh, we just sum both uh, delta tau's together, which equals one over fourteen plus one over thirty one, and here one over fourteen, one over thirty one. So, what we do now is we identify the sum, which is basically here, as you can see, zero point one, zero point zero three, zero point zero three, zero point zero seven, which is basically the total of each uh, path. So now, here's a question for you, which is basically the last thing. Let's say we have a red ant here, and the red ant wants to travel to the nest. What path will the red ant take? So the red ant will basically what will the red red ant will basically do is uh, uh, sense the amount of pheromones on each line. We've got the 0 0.07 here, the 0 0.01 here, and 0, 0 0.03 here. So after looking, after sensing the pheromones on each line, it will probably take the 0 0.1 since it, is the, since it has the highest level of pheromones. And that's, uh, that's it for us today. And thank you all very much.